Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to, excited to uh, chat with you a little bit about uh, the Huntsville Magazine. So if you'd like to introduce yourself and we'll get started there. All right. Well, I'm Takara Swoops and I'm the co-publisher, editor-in-chief of Huntsville Magazine. And I'm CJ Bird, co-publisher and COO or head of all the operations <laughs> for Huntsville Magazine. So I, w- I want to spend a little bit more time than I typically do talking about your backgrounds because y'all have moved all over the place and not the most traditional moves for most people I have on. Um, I think it's been from Japan to uh, Hawaii to Hawaii to Huntsville, which is not the most uh, traditional, not just from you know Nashville to Huntsville kind of move. Um, so talk a little bit about sort of your backgrounds, kind of what, how y'all met in, in, in Tokyo and kind of all of that. Like, And I, I know you even studied in, at Cornell and stuff like that too. So it'd be interesting to kind of talk a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you go well, first. Well, we didn't <laughs> we didn't start in Japan. There you go. <laughs> Japanese, no. but we did meet in Japan. So we started in Japan. Um, yeah, well, both of us went there with academia. Okay. Um, so Takara, she'll probably tell you a little bit more about that. But she went as a Fulbright scholar. Um, she had went with a university up in the northern part of Japan called. Uh, it was Tohoku University, right, up in Sendai. Uh, I was finishing up my master's degree research at a university in Kobe. Um, so I had a, a teaching job there, and they let me do my research <laughs> on, they let me, they let, gave me access to human subjects uh, for my research. So I was there for a year, she was there for a year, and we both um, finished that up and joined the same company at the same time in wow. Tokyo. And that's, yeah, that's where we met. I met her on my first day in the office. Wow. <laughs> And so what kind of, what was your sort of story to get you to Tokyo and kind of what were you, prior to getting that position there, what were you doing? So I initially went to Japan, um, excuse me, when I was a sophomore in college, I was studying Japanese and I was like, you know what? This language is really hard. <laughs> I should probably go to the country. Yeah. And so I decided I would do a semester abroad. So wow. that opened up an entire world to me. I wanted to, uh, after doing a semester abroad in Japan, I was like, I want to go back. <laughs> and I want to go back. The next time I go, I am not going to be broke because I had to pay my entire study <laughs> abroad fees and everything. Wow. Um, and I want it to be fully funded, and I want to have an entire year where I can just enjoy the people, the culture, the language, the food. Um, and honestly, it was like an answered prayer because I applied for a Fulbright uh, grant, and I was chosen as a Fulbrighter in my senior year. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I really do get to go back to Japan, fully funded. Um, and it, it was incredible. So You mentioned Cornell. I actually spent the summer with their Falcon Japanese program learning um, intense Japanese language training just so that, you know, I I would be able to navigate um, the culture better. And then, of course, I had to attend Tohoku University during that time because you do kind of like a graduate research project. So I had to, you know, improve my language ability, basically. And, uh, and like, I just – that's such, like, what was traveling – prior to that was that was traveling something that you y- y'all both really enjoyed and kind of you always thought you would live someplace else for a little while and or, or, or was that sort of like a new like oh wow like I have the opportunity to do this I'm just gonna go all in and try it it was absolutely something I've always wanted to do like I'm from Decatur Alabama oh wow and so I knew growing up like, that gonna I was Decatur. gonna leave <laughs> I knew it. Like I might have been like six or seven and I was like, I don't think this is my place. Okay. And so I knew I was going to go someplace. Mm-hmm. And so travel and I mean, Japan was the first time I ever I ever traveled outside of the continental US. Wow. You know, so it was my first trip abroad and I definitely got the travel bug. Yeah. CJ you have to hear his travel. I mean, don't tell you can't like go in detail because he's traveled <laughs> extensively like some okay. 40 plus countries there you go but I'm excited he to hear. is quite the traveler there we go so where are you originally from <laughs> so i was born and raised in a small town called mcminnville oregon okay uh, and i always <laughs> i always have to, to say there are two oregons there is oregon and there is portland <laughs> and i am from oregon there you go okay <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of great things about portland um and there used to be many more great things about portland 
today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm from a small town in Oregon called McMinnville. That's right. Okay. And, but you, did you travel a lot? Did you, did you move a lot growing up or did you just, or, or no. you pretty much just lived in no. Oregon your entire life? That was it until, okay. until college. I went to college on the East coast in Connecticut. So that was my sort of first time wow. kind of really venturing out of Oregon. I and mean, I had, you know, we had done family trips and things yeah, like that. But like actually up, kind of living someplace really else. Living somewhere, someplace else other than Oregon. Yeah, that was it. And, and then it for college. But, um, you know, I'd always had a passion for languages, which I actually discovered in college, right? Okay. So foreign languages was a, a thing for me and I, I didn't realize it but I, my senior year as an undergrad I was taking both French and Mandarin Chinese wow. and a, an advisor asked me she said why why are you doing this and I said well just kind of enjoy you know, it I between, guess. the difference between 12 and 18 credits is the yeah. same 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 cost and I can get it for yeah. while I'm here why not she's like you might look into foreign <laughs> languages and linguistics because that's not a thing that yeah. people normally do. And at that point in my life, I'd never even heard of linguistics, really. I had no idea wow. so much. Well, I mean, maybe I'd heard of it, but I was like, okay. And that just set me on a path for the next 10 years pursuing. I would wanted to be an educator. I wanted to do teaching. And then that introduced me to languages and linguistics as a, as a profession. And so those things came together. So for, prior to getting to yeah. Japan, where mm -hmm. all did you go kind of... Or first, live before that? First country living abroad was Korea, Seoul, Korea. Wow. So I was in Seoul, and that was my first job right right out of college. Was in How do Seoul, you find Korea. a job like that? I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. okay, you, you're in Connecticut, so, you're going to school, and you're looking at like yeah. a job board, and it's yeah. like, Seoul, Korea. Well, there, sure. was, there was one other university in, involved before that, so Hawaii Pacific University. I went there for a certificate for teaching, uh, but specifically for teaching English as okay. a second language. And so a professor there introduced me to... Gotcha. Uh, so Seoul, you went from right Connecticut before, to Hawaii, yeah. from Hawaii to Seoul. That's right. And then how long were you in Seoul and kind of where was the next sort of move? Two years and then straight over to, J well, yeah, basically <laughs> to Japan from there. But okay. um, yeah, I didn't Did live. a little bit of sightseeing along there the way. Was a lot. <laughs> I went to a lot of Asian countries during that period and then um, back to graduate school in Hawaii. Um, and that was where I studied uh, what we call second language acquisition is okay. how our brain learns and processes more than one language. Interesting. Um, yeah. And then that, then I went to Japan Okay. Uh, again through <laughs> connections with, you know, professors that, that knew, um, people at the universities. That gotcha. Like so y'all from Japan, y'all both got to the same job. And then from there, I guess that was the move from ho to Hawaii after that. Yeah, that's right. So we we loved Tokyo. I mean, Tokyo was a, just a fantastic place. We were there for, I think that last stint was over seven years. Um, wow. Our first daughter was born there, and we had just started a company there. And then uh, March 11th, 2011, the big uh, massive earthquake tsunami, which then caused that huge Nuclear radiation disaster. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we were there for that. And wow. And yeah, it, we... we we stuck it out for a little while, but we realized at that point we just didn't have enough information and the risk of radiation seemed not really worth it at that yeah. point, at that stage. I mean, not um, with a, a newborn baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Honestly, yeah. if we didn't have a newborn, we probably would have just, like, it's fine. Yeah, we, yeah I'll, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But there yeah, were these moments. Little radiation never hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. but there were these kind of eye-opening moments in those early days where one is I'm I'm at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo um, collecting potassium iodide pills, like just in case we need to take them in case. Wow. <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, maybe maybe we should move. This is not <laughs> all that necessary, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's that's what prompted the move to Hawaii. Was um, you know not only had I lived there previously, but you know, the time zone and, and the proximity to Japan allowed us to keep the business going, but okay. live, live there. And so, so what was the business that you had started at that point? Executive search and recruiting. So we helped American pharmaceutical medical device companies to recruit executives to run the primarily Japan, but other Asian subsidiaries. Okay. And this is a company that y'all both started, like founded. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, right. so you, you take the move to Hawaii. You're still mm -hmm. doing this company. Yeah. Um, when did the sort of the transition, so how long were you in Hawaii and like 10 years you were in Hawaii for 10 and that whole 10 years you were doing this company and That's kind right. of growing the company. Exactly. Um, and so not the, the transition from that to Huntsville magazine is, is also just doesn't make any sure. sense. Sure. Um, sure. so when did the opportunity, yeah. so I'm guessing you eventually either sold the company or yes. kind of. I did. Uh, you, so you ended up selling the company and you were looking for a new place to move. Well, we had wanted, I mean, to Well, I did it. Yeah. 
So I did not continue on with executive search. Okay. So um, when we moved to Hawaii, I actually uh, purchased a fitness franchise, and I ran that fitness franchise for about seven and a half, almost eight years. Wow. And it was through that fitness franchise, um, I had also created uh, a local kind of like family blog Mm -hmm. that really showcased like all the fun things that you can do with your family in Hawaii. Wow. And so in each of the cities that I've resided in, I've always had, you know, a blog component where I I shared the city Mm -hmm. that I enjoyed living in. Yeah. And so, you know, that is what really kind of sparked our interest when we decided. So I sold my franchise during the pandemic. And then a couple months later, he got an opportunity to sell his. (laughs) And all of a sudden we have like this opportunity. We're not tethered to Hawaii. We don't have to be here for a time zone or because I have this franchise. And immediately I'm like, I want to go back home. Yeah, (laughs) You know, we have four kids. um, And I really enjoy growing up here. I liked having a big family and I love the aunties, uncles, grandparents. And, um, We enjoyed Hawaii with our kids, but I was just like, our kids are missing, we're missing that family component, the extended family component. And it really is enriching, you know? Um, And so I knew immediately uh, during the pandemic, I wanted to get back home. And so that's when we started really researching where where should we live? And I wasn't too keen on returning to Decatur. Um, Huntsville has always been kind of like my big city. Yeah. Um, and you, you had not been back to Huntsville since you left originally? No, or I mean, you been I back would a, visit a, a like times? for Thanksgiving okay. or, you know, maybe a Christmas here or there. But and like I the, would the growth it had. I mean, you really, right. really weren't aware. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Like, you know, I would come to Huntsville for to go to the Madison Square Mall or the yeah. Books a Million, uh-huh. right? Those are my two <laughs> spots. There you go. And um, I remember coming here and I was like, wait, what happened to the Madison Square Mall? Yeah. And it was replaced with, you know, Mid City. And yeah, so it was I hadn't returned here and like really explored Huntsville. Yeah. I actually learned that Huntsville was undergoing this major development while we were in Hawaii and yeah. we were exploring where should we live? And I was like, wait, Huntsville is like <laughs> becoming this incredible yeah. city. We should really look into this, you know? Yeah. Um for someone so, for you, CJ, that didn't grow up in Huntsville, weren't familiar with Huntsville, you really had just maybe visited with her to, to come to Decatur, kind of visit Huntsville. What was your expectation of Huntsville, kind of prior to the prior to the move? <laughs> and did it did Huntsville meet that expectation or exceed that expectation? Well, that's a great, yeah, a really <laughs> nice question. Um, you know, I so just to cut to the second part of it. It's exceeded expectations in, in just about every way. Yeah, um, but I. Um, I'd have to really dig deep to figure out what were my expectations coming here. I mean, I, I knew enough about the city because yeah. we visited and I'd seen, we'd seen these kind of annual snapshots. Yeah. Like, okay, the growth, it's, it's you been know, a year. There's a new visiting. building here. There's a new right. building there, but nothing really. That's right. All the details you really yeah. weren't aware of. That's right. We, I wasn't too aware of that. I mean, I, we were excited, you know, a few things about it. So, you know, we had lived in places, you know, we're, we're Christians and we'd lived in places where, you know, our faith was this extreme minority. I mean, yeah. you know, Japan, you're talking less than a percent wow. uh, of believers, right? Hawaii, uh, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but um, we, we weren't, it, it wasn't common or normal, right? Yeah. I know a lot of people knew. Uh, so I was excited about coming to a place where, you know, it just, things felt more normal. Yeah. I expected it to just feel like a normal <laughs> totally. life. I wanted yeah. our, I wanted our, our children to grow up in a place where, you know, they'd have a sense of rootedness and we, we didn't have to, we didn't have to feel like we were constantly trying to counteract the culture, so to speak, yeah. you know, Absolutely. in terms of child raising and, and it's exceeded expectations in that wow. regard fully. I mean, so I, yeah, it's just great. Yeah. Our kids have slotted right in. And they, <laughs> They're thriving. I, I'm like a lot of their life looks like what I grew up with in the eighties, you wow. know, which is, yeah, really neat. And then, I mean, I, yeah. I couldn't imagine a move though. The like the moves that y'all were doing were pretty big moves. It's not just Major. like it's not just like putting was, your yeah. stuff into Major. a U-Haul and driving it across no, the country. No. It is you know getting on a plane and packing up your life. Yeah, how, yeah. like we're I mean, experts. 
Yeah, Correct. and like I mean, you at, at, at I guess at the time in Hawaii, I mean, I, did you have all all all, all four kids in Hawaii? Yeah. Yes. And so you had yeah. four kids, the two of y'all moving from Hawaii with That's everything right. that you had. Like uh-huh. how how stressful and how tough was that? And did <laughs> did, did the move from Japan to uh to Hawaii prepare you from the Hawaii yeah. to high school? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We- we, we, I think we just got a lot of practice in, um, the biggest move absolutely was the transition from Japan to, uh, back to the U S yes. that was a major transition for wow. us. Um, and then, I mean, honestly, after that, because we did, we did try out San Diego for about nine months and the time zone ended up not working. Really? So then from San Diego to Honolulu. So we just became really good (laughs) at like knowing what needs to be sold immediately. Um, what needs to be, uh, what should be kept and just really purging, 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 yeah. selling, selling, selling. Because, you know, you don't really need to move with so much stuff. Yeah. So um, we became experts. Yeah. <laughs> so packing up four children um, from uh, Hawaii and moving to Alabama, honestly, it wasn't that difficult for us because wow. we were practiced and we were ready. Yeah. And our kids were bigger kids so we weren't moving with we just had one little little guy yeah. and that's our uh, three-year-old but he was just like one and a half at the time um but our girls they were like ready to go they're seasoned travelers <laughs> you know they're like let's go they're carrying all their stuff they're checking their bed. i mean like, seriously they love to travel wow. <laughs> i mean all we had to do was show them you know pictures of the house right we yeah just, that's like, right here's I mean, where we're get, going yeah we get, exactly you know double the house for a quarter of the price and the, yeah the kids yeah. were just like yeah we're in that's awesome yeah that was another thing like we really we wanted to buy a house and uh, no lie the alabama girl and me i was just like there's no way there is no way we are <laughs> buying a house in Hawaii because the the amount of house and the type of house you get in Hawaii, it just doesn't compare to Alabama home. Wow. It doesn't. So I was just like. You were so we, excited to come back and, kind of get, and get that house that you've all, you're like, yes, now we're buying a house. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like like the entrepreneurial sort of spirit that y'all have kind of sparked a little bit for you in, in, in Japan and then kind of for you in 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 hawaii and honolulu like is that something that you've always had that 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 entrepreneurial spirit like you can think of times growing up that you're like you were you were either had like a, a, a lemonade stand or you would sell sell stuff at lunch like whatever that like or is that something that just you know after you got to japan or you kind of got out of college that switch was flipped yeah for me it happened in japan it happened okay. a lot later yeah it happened after pursuing academia and then becoming a bit disillusioned with it in graduate school. You know, I loved the content and the research and everything yeah. about that path, but I also got a good look at what it was like to work in universities. Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, this probably isn't, you know, yeah. it's not going to be <laughs> it for me. And so that's what prompted me to start looking outside. And yeah, I met the right people at the right time. I mean, it was just God weaves the story that we can't predict or yeah. see what's happening. And it's, it's almost always beautiful if we wait long enough. Um, and I met these guys and they introduced me to what it took to start and run a business. And yeah. Yeah. The rest was, the rest was history. Yeah. yeah. It was completely different for me. I've always had an entrepreneurial something inside of me. Yeah. Um, from, I would say in college is when I was like, okay, I worked, uh, two jobs during to put myself through college. Um, and then I started like a home cleaning residential cleaning business in DC. Um, so I always have had, you know, a part-time job, a full-time job in the summer, and then running some sort of business for additional income and just experience basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, and, and having a blog, um, That's been one of the most enriching things in each of the cities I've lived in because it's just ended up opening up so many doors and opportunities and just getting to know the city, you know, in each of the cities, it's been pretty awesome in that the opportunities that have come our way. And I wasn't even a full time blogger. I just really enjoy creating content. Uh, sharing, you know, photos and, and sharing my knowledge about the city. Yeah. So y'all get to Huntsville, you get, you get, you get the four kids, you get all your stuff moved over here from Hawaii and you're getting settled into Huntsville. Uh, you just sold your company and it's kind of like, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to sell a company. I mean, sure. like it's, it's one of those things great. that's like, it's like, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. You're able to, you're, you're able to kind of like those, not that there were chains holding you, but like it, yeah. you're able to kind of like do like, kind of like, what do I do now? That's right. Yeah. And yeah. so you get here, I guess, right after the pandemic, mm-hmm. I guess or so. So it was like 2021. Yeah. We felt like, so it was, I mean, at least from, from people living in Hawaii's perspective, <laughs> it was still happening big time. So we felt like we flew out of the pandemic. Really? We just yeah. plane no lie. And flew away yeah. from it. <laughs> you're like was, watching it as you're which flying Which was fantastic, over. which yeah. was an absolutely great I have to tell the story <laughs> of when we, Jake we Fuller. flew, <laughs> we flew uh, from Hawaii and we flew into Nashville mm. and we, we land, we're in the, our rental car, all four kids, all of our, you know, luggage packed in there. And I was like, oh, we should stop by this Chick-fil-A because yeah. there's there's no Chick-fil-A in Hawaii, yeah. right? And you're like, Chick-fil-A is <laughs> the best. Right. <laughs> it's like, welcome, welcome home, yeah. you know? Um, so we go into the Chick-fil-A. We're all masked up yeah. because of Hawaii, right? And the pandemic and everything. And we're in Hawaii was very strict about And around what time was this? Was this like This July was July 2021. 2021. Okay. Wow. We... <laughs> We walk into the Chick Fil A, and nobody is wearing a mask. We literally look like aliens yeah. in a different. My children are like, "Are we? So, what's happening? Where did we land? <laughs> Where are we?" <laughs> it was hilarious. Welcome to Nashville. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know, I don't. I don't think I've worn one since. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, like I, woo. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Except for at our church. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. There so in, in so in so I guess July of twenty twenty one, you 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 kind of arrive to back home, back yeah. to Alabama, back to Huntsville. Yeah. Um, sort of what what was that? You, you, you get here. Did you kind of ultimately think you know there was like, hey, let's do this magazine, or kind of how did that this idea of like Huntsville Magazine come to be? Yeah, you want to talk about that? Yeah, it we actually happened before we even. Got we here. are. Really? We knew. Um, we knew we were going to start Huntsville Magazine when we were in Hawaii. Wow. So after both of us had sold our companies and we were researching our move to Huntsville because we knew we were going to move here, we were just like, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we were researching Huntsville and I naturally, you know, in each of the cities we've lived in, there's always been a city magazine, you know? So with Tokyo, there was Metropolis and then there's Tokyo Weekender. And then in San Diego, there's San Diego magazine. And then Honolulu is Honolulu magazine. So we were researching and I was like, well, Let's look up Huntsville Magazine and see what's <laughs> happening and look at all the neighborhoods. 100% and, and kind of you know, get equated to what's there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you found nothing. I did not <laughs> find Huntsville Magazine. And then insert crickets because there was nothing. Right. Nothing. And I was like, uh, there is no Huntsville Magazine. And honestly, it made me question, should we do this? Because <laughs> they don't have a city magazine. Yeah. Like if, if no one's done it yet, then maybe right. we shouldn't be the yeah. ones to do it. Yeah. Well, it just made me question the move. Period. Oh, really? It, it didn't. It, like, it, I Huntsville didn't Huntsville has nothing. <laughs> we're, we're staying. Well, the cities we've lived in have had a thriving wonderful city magazine that yeah. really help you understand the culture, navigate the city, know what's happening. I mean, it really just helped us get out and yeah. know where to go and all the places. And you and didn't find any of that. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't, we didn't find the our our guide, and I was like, I don't know, like maybe it's still developing, but I feel <laughs> a little bit like weird that there's no Huntsville magazine. And then, you know, I think the catalyst was when I looked up the domain, yeah, and it was available. And you're like, okay, and I know you just sold your company, but we're <laughs> right. starting another one. Right? Yeah, CJ was like, purchase it immediately <laughs> right, right now. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> quit playing. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess what was this? Or was this like in 2020? You kind of had this idea for the magazine, or was this late, like like almost a few months before you yeah, moved? Yeah, this was right. a few months before. Yeah. We or, moved. Okay, and then you're this just like, okay, Huntsville Magazine's available. The domain's available. No one's doing it. All social media handles were available. And we like, we were shocked. And you're like, okay, well, this is easy. Like, I've, I've done, I've, you've done all the heavy lifting, and you haven't even been to Huntsville yet. Right. <laughs> and so you get to Huntsville, you get settled in, you kind of get equated to what Huntsville has to offer. Um, and then you kind of get full, like you just start jumping right into the magazine. Yeah, we, well, we first um, attended some city magazine editorial publisher conferences. Okay. We just needed to do our research. Like, yeah. is this something we really want to do? Yeah. Um, and so we, we went to uh, a few conferences and just 
really try to acquaint ourselves with other publishers and, you know, ask ourselves, are we stupid? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 can we do this? Yeah, like you hear all of these phrases like print is dead or, yeah. you know, you want to, you know, throw away money, start a newspaper, <laughs> you know, things yeah. like that. And so um, we just wanted to do our research to make sure like, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Are we crazy? Yeah. Is this is this actually a viable business mm. or is it, you know, dying yeah. like people say it is? And what we learned is that while they're the newspaper industry, you know, is struggling with their business model and just finding, you know, uh, something very sustainable. Yeah. Um, what has not happened is it hasn't been the same for city or regional magazines. Mm -hmm. They actually have increased their readership. Yeah. Um, and that was something that we were really happy to hear yeah. about. You and, know? Like, and I think being able to partner like with things that y'all do already on social media and other outlets, digital stuff, print stuff, social media things, being involved in the community in so many other ways besides just having a magazine. Exactly. Right? So, and, I, and I think that's where the newspapers kind of fall short is that they are yeah. just that print. And so they're not involved with everything that's going on. And it's like, you're, you're at, you're at groundbreakings, you're at restaurant releases, you're at new restaurants, you're at, you just, you're out and enjoying the community yourself. And then you also happen to have a magazine. So it's, yes. it, it's almost like the magazine is, yes, it's, it's the main thing, but there are also so many other things that y'all are. A part Absolutely. Of. Like that's we came into this and we want it, we have a digital first strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, even now digital really is first, um, yeah. for us because, um, our audience is a broad range, but predominantly our audience, they like digital, yeah. you know, um, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Sarah? I was just going to say, it's, I mean, it, Clark, it's a great perspective that you had. I mean, it, we call it Huntsville magazine, but I mean, Huntsville magazine is its Instagram channel. Yeah. Huntsville, Huntsville magazine is its Facebook channel. Yeah. Huntsville yeah. magazine is, um, our digital, our dot com yeah. channel. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing with, you know, for hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like with, it's faces. almost, it's, it's like, it's like, it's, they're all little tools in the tool bag and like one tool yeah. is not going to be the best unless your other <laughs> tools are working as hard as they could. You got and it. so by your Instagram, you're in, like the magazine as they print, option would not be as successful if there it wasn't an Instagram or it wasn't a Facebook totally. right. because yeah. I would say there's probably more people that consume it on social media than probably the magazine alone yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. but there's people that then can reference the magazine because it's on their coffee table I mean I, th I think I have every single one of y'all's magazines on our coffee table Thank it you. is a Thank it you. is a Huntsville <laughs> magazine you. coffee table it is <laughs> it is all the time and every time a new one comes in it's it's oh I think I'm or like I'll read it and then I'll Think about, I think that was in in that magazine. I need to look back through it. And then yeah. it, it's there to reference it or y'all have a social post that references or whatever it might be. That's great. And I hear. think, you know, having that is 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 why y'all have been successful. So you 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 get into this, you kind of research the magazine, you research, go to other cities, kind of see what's going on. Mm. When did the first magazine kind of launch and was the success what you envisioned? Yeah. Late May of last year, right? The summer issue was mm -hmm. the first one. And yeah, it was... It was way bigger than we thought. Really? We had no idea how. <laughs> we honestly didn't know what to expect. So May 22? Yeah. So it can't. So it was a summer issue and the issues usually come out a little bit before. The, okay. Um, yeah. You know, the, the season starts. So it came out late May. This was summer 2022. And I mean, we just had a flood of calls and emails i mean people subscribers people, people would even come by the office and things like that we yeah initially i started getting a little bit worried like oh uh, yeah this is can we meet the demand <laughs> right yeah yeah because um, i mean like, you've already grown the social media channels like there has yeah, already been that you've grown that presence before even having a physical issue so you yeah. already mm -hmm. had people interested probably already ready to get the mailing going mm -hmm. Um, as far as partners, like locally, did you already have some of those lined up? So when the first issue came out, you were able to put it on the shelf? Yep. Yeah, we had some advertisers in the first issue. That's right. Um, that was a, and retail that was, partners. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the retailers as yeah. well, too. So we had some retail outlets. Um, I forgot exactly how many we had in that retailers, in that initial one, probably about 15, mm -hmm. about 15 in that okay. first one. And it's now about 130. Um, so we've grown wow. a lot of them. Um, and so, I mean, I'm guessing from that July 2021 20, till when you launched the issue, like that, the, all that heavy lifting was getting the issues together, getting the 
uh, advertisers, getting into and getting all the connections locally to kind of build yeah. the magazine. I mean, we had we had to <clears throat> build everything from scratch. We had scratch, to build right? Huntsville we, Magazine. We literally com. started it. We didn't have um, investors or partners or anything. It was just us. Yeah. So I mean, you know, f- from my side, I mean, for her, it was all the editorial content. You know, planning like everything that was going to be in it, yeah. recruiting all the writing and the f- all the writers and photographers, and yeah. like, just building the, the team and getting the concept in place. I had to. I had to figure out, okay, how are we going to distribute this thing? Yeah. Right? How, like how, how is how, it going to get? How are people going to get this? <laughs> from our minds onto your coffee yeah, table. 100%. Right? Yeah. And like, I mean, you, you had not been in Huntsville for a while. I mean, you've been yeah. traveling the world. Totally. You've been living in other countries, other cities. Yeah. And so you didn't have the connections that people that maybe had been here already five, That's 10 right. years just grown either even just grown up in Huntsville like so you're kind of you're having to almost make a name for yourself in a city totally. that you had not been in yeah. in a very long time and you almost forever yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just like, right. no one really knows who you are and what you're doing and you're having to, it, it took you I mean what's crazy is it only took you a year right like in that yeah. year it must have felt like it was five or six for y'all because you're just <laughs> running around like crazy yeah I did I mean for I think for both of us um but certainly for me it's just it's not the first time that I've been in this situation. Yeah. Right? I mean, I have had to move. I mean, I had to, I mean, I have moved into new places, started a new career or business mm-hmm. and had to learn how to make it work and yeah. find success that way. So I, I think that, I mean, if you can do it in Tokyo, you can do it in Huntsville. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, our having started careers in Tokyo foreign place, foreign language, uh, literally being outsiders and just trying to find a forge a a new path and interacting with people. I think it definitely uh, provided us some really good confidence and some insight. Like if we can, if we can have a successful business in a foreign country, um, then we should be able to navigate Starting a business in Huntsville, Alabama. There you go. I mean, I, <laughs> I completely agree. And like in, in, in the grand scheme of things, though the businesses that y'all have had prior were very in, were very different industries. I think being business is business in, in some sense. Sure. Like oh, absolutely. Like growing a business, networking <laughs> for a business. Um, just like, yes, the actual service that you're providing is different than what you were doing in Tokyo and different right. what you were doing in Hawaii. But in, this, in the grand scheme of things, business is business. And so like once you've yes. been successful with a business, you can kind of... Okay, here's how to be successful with this business, though there will be things that are you will not know how to do. Like, oh yeah. I mean there's gonna be like <laughs> yeah, of course. there's so, been a lot of that. Yeah. So I mean like <laughs> and like like thinking back to like that when that first launch came out in May of 20, 2022, what were some things that went really well and what were some things you quickly were like, okay, we gotta make sure we are able to accommodate this need or this is what people are looking for for the next issue. Yeah, yeah. Um I think what went really well was the response, our initial, we got the magazine right in terms of content, the quality, um, even the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And we also, we put a lot of thought into the add to story ratio. Um, When you thumb through Huntsville magazine, you're going to see more stories than ads. And that's very intentional. And we're also very intentional about having integrated ads. So um, you won't see that many fractional ads in our magazine. When you thumb through it, it's almost like, wait, do they even have ads in here? And then you go back and you're like, oh, this is an ad. It's just fully integrated into it. So we spent a lot of time um, print wise, making sure this makes sense. You know, when you pick it up, we don't want it to be a throwaway. We want this to be something that people keep on their coffee tables or when you have a a college friend visiting the city yeah. and they, you know, here's what you can do. Yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You put this in the the guest room for them yeah. to thumb through, you know? 100%. So we definitely feel like we got the, the feel, the quality, the content, uh, and the add to story ratio. Right. Um, what we struggled with was print and the production side. It yeah. is, 
It is a lot. It's that, very involved. Um, the design, every page, and print is not forgiving. You know, it's wow. printed. It's there forever, yeah. literally. This, These magazines are going to be here 100, 200 years later. Somebody's going to pick this up. You know, look at what they used to do yeah. in 2022, you yeah. know. Um, unlike digital. So I'm a digital girl, and it's just like, with digital, you know, you can change something immediately. With print, it is so time consuming yeah. you have to have multiple eyes multiple copy editors um, the design I I mean everything and it takes you know quality design takes time yeah. and so I think our, honestly our biggest uh, obstacle is just um, staying on time with the design and production yeah. demands you know that's mm -hmm. been our our major struggle yeah. um in our first year 100%. and i honestly i think we given that neither one of us have had a print background <laughs> and i'm the one who does the design and layout like i i'm gonna give ourselves a big high five that we got through our first year yeah, <laughs> you know I, I honestly think it's an advantage i do i mean we you know, have yeah. we come from the space? We certainly, you know, there's certain things that we would have known. Um, but when we go and meet other publishers, that we, we go to conferences regularly. And we've made some great friends yeah. in the industry across the country. And, um, you know, our our operation is in so many ways faster and leaner than, than theirs are. We've been able, to, right. we've been able to take, you know, a, a professional services mindset into the business and yeah. to operate things, you know, leanly, quickly, and, and so on. So that, yeah, we've, we've definitely had some obstacles from not knowing, you know, what yeah. we don't know. 100%. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it's sort of like coming into a new city yeah. for the new place, right? We You have fresh we, eyes. We tend to see things with fresh eyes. Um, I, I like to see, we, I've learned to see opportunity where others might not. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's yeah. just been a really valuable thing that was, you know, taught to me by that guy I mentioned who I met in Tokyo. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that's like you, yeah. you might not know at the moment when someone says something like that or gives you some advice for a business, like how it's applying at that moment for right. that cause. Yeah. But then you get to Huntsville and you're like, you can kind of look back and say, oh, like that. I remember when they told me this, I, that, yeah. I think that'll fix this issue we're having. Yeah, totally. Um, Cause I guess right now, so the magazine comes out, it's like four issues a year, right? It's yeah. Every, it's every That's season right. almost. Uh -huh. right. Um, so when you're, I mean, how does, I think for someone that doesn't know, I mean, like I, I, I don't plan on starting a magazine and yeah. so I don't know how, how that <laughs> process works. Um, but so like an issue that's coming out in the fall, like this, uh, I guess the upcoming fall issue. Yeah. How far back are you having to work for an issue that's coming out, say in the next few months all right so our fall issue is at the printer right now okay. so it will touch down soon so i can tell you about the winter issue that's coming okay. out so um with the winter issue i we put out our call for stories and i call it um our winter wish list okay um where we put out our editorial plan and we send that out to our entire team. And that was sent out about two weeks ago for our winter issue. Okay. So almost like six, six months out. Yeah. Wow. And, um, our writers, they let us know this story looks great. I want that one. And, you know, we assign yeah. stories, we divvy up all the work. Um, and then those stories are due on September 30th. And okay. from September 30th, they go through the pre-design, pre-press layout. Wow. Um, we do that for about five to six weeks. Okay. Um, which is considered pretty fast, yeah. <laughs> just FYI. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, m most magazines, it's about a seven to eight week kind of turnover wow. if it's a big magazine. So I guess like, what is it, like late October, everything is sort of... Yeah, so late October, that's when we are getting our files uploaded and print ready. Yeah. And the files go over to the printer and they, the printer does a pre-press and they go, they walk through all their quality checks yeah. and it gets printed. And then from there, our printer is not, we tried to find a printer here in Alabama, but or a lot of different parameters that we had, right. you know, we had to find a printer that is outside of Alabama. Wow. So, um, yeah, the magazines are shipped from our printer to Birmingham. Wow. And from the U.S. Postal Service Processing Center in Birmingham are distributed, you know, to all of our subscribers. Okay, so and so, it, 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 so I guess some might come to, like, some box might come to y'all to the office to kind of, 
do. Yeah, but we all did the, our own. All the, uh, all the actual mail delivery just goes straight from Birmingham to whoever's house. Yeah, you got right. it. Gotcha. Right. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, like, yeah. So, I mean, that is such a, it's a process that you're really having to think. You're never really thinking, hey, what's happening in the next 30 days for the company? You're thinking what's happening in the next 90 right. to 120. <laughs> like, it is right. always a three to four month lookout process. Exactly. Has that been similar to the other business other businesses that you've done? Is that the same sort of mindset you would have for those businesses that you applied to this one? Or is that has that been different? That's a good insight. You want to go first? For me, that has been the m- incredibly different because yeah. I was used to planning out two months. Yeah. in advance like 60 days out yeah. was my normal mentality mm-hmm. when it came to my fitness franchise and then also with the blogs that I ran I would plan content out you know uh, a month or two months out yeah but with the magazine it's just like it cannot be 30 no 60 days out it has to literally be I like I need to send out our spring issue like wish list for our team like at the end like mid September that's when that has to go out and that's for the spring issue. Ooh. So honestly I I enjoy that this has made me a great planner. Yeah. You know, you, you because have to be. yeah, because it, it, there is you cannot be last minute yeah. in print. So this has been a wonderful, uh, I think, personal challenge for me yeah. because I'm like, all right, I I have to force myself to not be a last minute person. Yeah. I have to be on it, and I have to plan out not like you know two months in advance. Mm-hmm. I have to plan two quarters yeah. ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, how, how, how does that apply to your business and kind of how that's how your your entrepreneurial journey has been for like planning things? This is incredibly fast compared to both Japan and (laughs) the executive search space. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every kind of recruiting maybe is different, but um, you know, what we did, you know, the cycle would be any, I mean, the fast ones were three months and it would sometimes be six months to a year. Um, So we would, we were recruiting executives at a pretty senior level. um, And so those searches take time and the transitions take time. So yeah, for me, this is, um, it's, it's right around, I mean, yeah, the project planning and in our outlook is it, it's not too different. It's not too far off. Um, But I have noticed there's actually, I mean, what on the advertising side, the sales um, cycle is shorter, right? It's, it's much shorter. Yeah, right? it's much shorter. It's nice. It's fast paced, and um, it depends on who we're working with. Um, you know, we have some local advertisers; those tend to be very fast, right? Yeah. Um, and then we have some big corporate national advertisers that it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. So, I mean, thinking thinking about like the the, the Huntsville Magazine now. I mean, you're you're a year into it. Yeah. You've, you've done. You just celebrated a year, I guess, in July. Yeah. Um, and so, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. That's exciting. It's exciting <laughs> to see. Um, so you, it, it's it's one of those things like you're you're for the business itself. You're thinking, you know, you're thinking in quarters almost. You're you're really looking yes. ahead. Yes. But it's also, you know, it's important to kind of think about in the now, like, hey, what are some? Oh, how is business going today? Like that's yeah. also something you have to kind of like mm. teeter totter between a little bit. Yeah. Um, looking at the looking at the magazine year in. What does the rest of this year look like? Goal, like any goals you have for the rest of this year, as well as, I mean, you 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 think in quarters, you think in six, twelve months increments. What does the next couple of years look like for you? What are some big goals you have, big aspirations you have for Huntsville Magazine? Well, one of our goals um, from the very beginning is to we want to reach five thousand print subscribers as soon as possible. Okay. So that's still we haven't we're not there yet, yeah. um, but that's definitely uh, a goal that we continue to have, and we just press we're pressing gas on any any ad campaign at all just to get uh, subscribers uh, to Huntsville Magazine. And you know we we do have a lot, so I'm I'm very happy about the subscribers that we do have but you know we um we want to make sure that our magazine is audited um so that we can be a part of a uh, major like uh, ad agency campaigns mm. and you have to go through a thorough process um yeah. just to you know ensure that you know you're a legit yeah. publication and that's very important to us um so Everything that we're doing, we're just preparing for our, our first audit. Um, yeah. And that'll open up, you know, a lot of doors in terms sure. of large advertisers that we can get in our magazine yeah. as well. Um, and then in terms of um, our digital. So currently our traffic is we're we're at about 30,000 unique visitors per month. And we really want to increase that um, maybe double 
double that to about 70 to 80. Um, And is that something, is that sort of that, you know, one year goal, two year goal? Is it the quicker, the better? (laughs) Is it like, I think it's the quicker, the better because, um, I mean, we exceeded our first year expectations, you know? So I think that the more, and this is just us with a very limited, both of us being full time, you know, we don't have like a huge staff. We have contractors who help us. Um, but this is us operating on a very lean lean. operation, you know, um, and refining all of our processes over the first year. And I'm really happy to have that first year under our belt because we can look back and say, okay, this worked, let's keep doing this. And this, you know, didn't work out so well. So let's see if we can pivot and shift over to this, right? Um, So I think traffic to our website, that's been maybe one of the most surprising. And it's, you know, event-driven People really seek out events and they want them all in one place yeah. and not having to have a, a browser bookmarks folder of all these different places <laughs> I have to go to find what's happening, yeah. right? Um, so I definitely think we can hit like a major uh, traffic goal yeah. for year two. That That's definitely one of our goals. For sure. And then, of course, um, you know, social media or whatnot. We should break 10K um, next year in terms of yeah, followers or sure. whatnot. Um, but our engagement rate has always been the most important and we've never subscribed to, you know, uh, the quantity of content. We're really all about quality. Yeah, for sure. Is, are those goals the same? Like, is there any goals that you have specifically that you would like to see? Well, I'm, I was surprised because you talked about a lot about the, you know, the the quantifiable, measurable things like that. (laughs) I'll talk a little bit about editorial stuff, even though that's really her, her (laughs) sphere. One thing that I, I, I'm really pleased with this, this was intentional and it, and it's actually happened for us is that we, we wanted the magazine to look like Huntsville looks. Yeah. When you flip through this magazine, when you pick it up and you see it, you're going to see all of Huntsville (sighs) and we achieved (laughs) that and what that translated to is that our audience, our subscribers, and from what we can tell from our Instagram, Facebook, and digital traffic, our audience also looks like Huntsville. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we want to just really just double and triple down on that. Yeah. Right. Because, um, you know, some of the options that have been here before, you know, there, there are other print options there, like free free things yeah. around town um, that are, you know, well-established models, but the focus has tended to be on just a few wealthy zip codes. Right. Yeah. And we're about all of Huntsville. And when we say Huntsville, we're talking about the metro area, right? Yeah. There's 500,000 people yeah. uh, and it's in not, this metro and, and, and area. And it's growing like crazy. Yeah, 50 <laughs> mile radius. It's like 1.2 million and it's, it's no sign of slowing down. No. Right? So we see, we just want to continue that strategy of showcasing all of the best of all of Huntsville. Um, yeah. Really forward looking. You know, we like to say it's where Huntsville is going. Yeah. We're showing where it's going. The magazine is also where Huntsville is going. 100%. Right? Um, yeah. But editorially, um, we are, I can talk about this, right? Yeah, Please. we can talk about it. This is the first time I'm actually saying this out. <laughs> so you're getting, okay. you're getting some exclusive go. info. Only, okay. on, only on Beyond oh, Rockets. Okay. I have we no have, idea what's about to come out of his mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to know what I'm going to say. Now, we're, we're planning an industry, a new industry section that we want, right? So we've oh, got yeah. some really exciting and important big stuff happening here. Yeah. Right, uh, across aerospace, cybersecurity, defense, all the am- amazing things happening. Yeah. Now, these are global industries, and there's plenty of coverage of what's happening in these things globally, but there's a lot of local stories. Right? Yeah. Movers and shakers and exciting projects that are making a big impact you know, locally as well as globally. And so we're working now on a concept for a new section that will showcase industry as well as a lot of other cultural wow. events. And so it'll like be a section so. within the magazine. So yeah. Kind yeah. Of, kind right. of so right moving now, forward. Yeah, that's exactly right. We've got, you know, we've got music and events and culture. Yeah. So and it'd be like an, a, an, another tab on y'all's website that's too. Exactly I was looking right. at the website before yeah, y'all got absolutely. here. Absolutely. That's exactly it. Okay. So, I mean, the, sort of the last, last two questions I typically sure. always ask. Um, looking at this journey, I mean, from... Tokyo to Hawaii to Huntsville to yeah. multiple companies to selling companies to now founding Huntsville Magazine. How much of your success would you contribute to being in the right place at the right time? And how much would you contribute to your hard work? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so <laughs> I tend to blame myself for anything that doesn't go right. And I tend to thank <laughs> God for anything that does. So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 
say. you know, I don't know if I could pick one. I it's like, you know, what's the, what's the, what's the line that the most successful people tend to also be the hardest working somehow. There's there's something about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think there's there's certainly some some serendipity involved, and then you know you got to do something with it when yeah. it shows up. Hundred percent. Right? You can just sit there and look at the opportunity, and it just passes you right by. So. Um, from my perspective, I would have to say, hmm, I, I'm just one of those, put your elbows and your sweat into it yeah. and, and, and work your butt off. Um, and then opportunities open up and they happen. Yeah. And I, um, I don't want to discount timing because we were certainly in Tokyo during an incredible time yes. of executive search. And I, and then too, uh, coming to Huntsville, you know, our magazine released right after it was announced that Huntsville was like the number one city. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, like this, like, you, yeah. And that's stuff that you, that you could have not foreseen. There's no planning. Right. No. And then the Orion Amphitheater was our cover story for the first issue. Yeah. So I, I I think that, uh, you know, timing absolutely is, of course, important, but I I just, I can outwork anyone. I'm just, I, I know it. Yeah. I will put in the effort and the time. Um, and so I'm just going to say that I think the Lord has given us an incredible work ethic and vision and experience to really, you know, seek out opportunities and just go for yeah. it. I you mean, know? and it, it, it seems, it seems like y'all uh, working hard is not something that is, is foreign to y'all. Y'all are very much after it all the time. No, we used and to yeah. work 12 hour days in Tokyo. So we, our, initial meeting mm -hmm. you know our first environment was we're in the office from 8 a.m until like 8 p.m at night yeah you and know I, and i gave up the idea of like the notion of work-life balance i mean i get the, the principle there but i like the idea of work like in, in work-life integration a yeah. lot better and i and just, especially I never, if you love what you do yeah that's the thing oh, I, yeah. I don't i never feel like i haven't felt like it's been work with any of the businesses in 15, 20 years. When I was a teacher, it felt like work <laughs> <laughs> and God bless teachers. Um, but it doesn't, I just feels like I'm trying to get something done. Yeah. We just got this mission. You're just moving the needle and done. you're enjoying doing it. So and it's just, it's just part of it. Yeah, that's right. But so the, the, Absolutely. La yeah, the last question I always ask is if anyone's listening and they want to connect with Huntsville magazine, they want to get an issue, they want to subscribe, they want to be on the mailing list. They yeah. want to find you on social media. Yeah. Where are all the places they can find you and where can they connect with you? Uh, I'll do distribution. You want to cover the description? So yeah. we are incredibly grateful for all of our amazing retailers. We have several local retailers here in Huntsville. Um, and we have several retailers that are across North Alabama. So we are in 130 plus stores. Um, you can pick us up at Walmart, Target, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, Whole Foods, um, CVS, does I say Target? Walgreens. Walgreens. Target, every single Kroger. Uh, Publix and Kroger. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, and then we have our local shops here that you can find us at the Standard Social, um, Ella Terre, 106 in Jefferson, uh, AM Collective, Alabama Goods Store, Harrison um, Brothers. Harrison Brothers. Wow. We have, uh, I, I'm missing out on several of them. So there's uh, Margo <laughs> Indicator, 2nd yeah, Indicator Street shops Avenue second. Shops yep. Indicator. Um I hope I have a left spots to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, HuntsvilleMagazine.com. Um, and then, you know, we were, as we talked about earlier, we were blessed. Yeah. Just at Huntsville Magazine for all the social handles. <laughs> it's, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you name it. We're on LinkedIn. But if you want to subscribe, you go to subscribe.huntsvillemagazine.com. Again, subscribe.huntsvillemagazine.com. And if you just go to huntsvillemagazine.com, there's a little subscribe button. You'll see it. Mm -hmm. um, you can subscribe for 30% off with a coupon code BEYOND. Yeah. So we'll have all that information, the coupon code, all that stuff will be in the episode notes. So yes. if you're listening to this and you want to grab your Huntsville Magazine subscription, use code BEYOND for 30% off. Uh, I thank you for spending the last 53, 54 minutes with me. Uh, time Bye. flies by, but it was it was great <laughs> learning a little bit more about your story, 
the story of Huntsville Magazine, how you got here, and I continue to look forward to the success you'll have in Huntsville for years to come. Oh, Thank thanks Thank so you, much, Clark. Clark. Yeah, we fun. love your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff.